Very nice. So we are on um, page. Anyone know? One eighty-five. Thank you. Yes, marine mammals. Mammals all have hair. They're homeotherms. What does that mean? Anyone know? Homeotherm? Is that when their body's warm and cold? It like whatever the like the surroundings. No, warm that, blooded. that's ectotherm. Warm blooded. Warm blooded. Homeo, what's homeo mean? Or what's homo mean? You the know? Same. Same. Uh, homeotherm keeps the same body temperature at all times. You're a homeotherm. You're a mammal. See? See, you fit into that list. Mostly viviparous with placenta. What's viviparous mean? They give birth to live young. Give birth to live young. Do humans do that? Yes. Hey, we're mammals. A placenta is a feeding organ that's inside the mother. It's what's attached to the umbilical cord. And that's how the baby gets nutrition from the placenta. Okay, so what if the baby comes out dead but they bring it back to life? Then technically you weren't live young. That would be you'd be you'd be an extraordinary human being. Yeah, that would be an exception to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they never they look, yes. Like after you have a baby, don't you have to deliver the placenta? That's right. Ew. They never show that. They got to take out the placenta. Like, what is like? The placenta is an organ that looks about it's about that big. It's brown. Oh my god. And they they swing it around the room and <laughs> throw it up. No. Yeah. It, they just. Nip it off, and it, it doesn't hurt when it comes out. It just comes right out. Is it like really like unravel? Like People that? eat that stuff. Yeah, it's on the. You can actually wash your hair in it. Umbilical cord. Blood and placenta. That's good for your hair. I know. I would never do that. Yeah, uh, the the Scientologists they eat the placenta. No, only very good for your hair. Simon Simon Cowell gets a sheep placenta facial. All animals, all wild animals eat the placenta because it's nutritious. Okay, so. Um, keep this apple glow, right? Mammary glands. All mammals have mammary glands for feeding their young. The females do. Of course, the females have the placenta, not the males. And the females have the mammary glands. True. Make milk to feed their babies. Large brain. All mammals have big brains. Weren't, didn't, uh, uh, like cavemen have bigger brains? They just didn't know how to use them. Uh, Neanderthals. They just didn't know how to use them. <laughs> Neanderthals. No, the, the bigger brains help them with their uh, muscles. One of the things brains do for you is they control your muscles. And the Neanderthals had bigger muscles than modern humans. And they had a bigger area of their brain, but that was to control their muscles. It, it wasn't for intelligence. Can we get that enlarged? What's that? Can we get that enlarged? Nah, we can't really fit much more brain in our skulls. Oh, that sucks. <coughs> Mainly sexually dimorphic. What does that mean? Well, s sexual dimorphism is a difference in the way the females and the males look. Many organisms like reptiles, you can't really tell if it's a male or a female. Males and females look the same. But most mammals are sexually dimorphic. You can tell the difference between the males and the females, can't you? By looking, you can say, oh, that's a guy, that's a girl. You can tell there's a difference. That's sexual dimorphism. There's a couple. In a lot of organisms, the female is a lot bigger than the male. Not so in humans, but in a lot of mammals, that's the case. Because the female is often stuck in one spot, caring for their young, and have to defend their young from attackers. So the female's got to be big, whereas the male can mate and then leave, and the male doesn't stay and take care of the young. So it doesn't have to be so big, because it's like it can pick its fights. Now, if some it's the other way around. Sometimes the male is the real big one and does a lot of the fighting. You often see that when they're in a when a group when there's groups of them that uh, or there's territoriality where you're fighting for your territory or something. It just depends on the species. 
skipping that. We don't need it. Um, so we're going to start with pinnipeds. You ever heard of pinnipeds? Those are seals, sea lions, and walruses. And so uh, here we have seals on the right, sea lions, and fur seals on the left. Fur seals, they call them fur seals, but they're not seals. They're actually related to the sea lion. If, you ever, if you've ever heard of a fur seal, that's actually a type of sea lion. They just were named fur seals a long time ago because seals and sea lions look similar. They live in cold waters. They have a big layer of blubber for protection, food storage, and buoyancy, keeping in heat. The blubber of these organisms is fat, and it's real thick. It's not like fat that you're, you're used to seeing on like a steak. It's not that consistency. It's more like the consistency of tire rubber. It's real thick and heavy, blubber is. And it'll, it'll really hold in heat. Stores a lot of food and it helps them float. So they're showing you here some of the differences between seals and sea lions. Seals don't have an ear on the outside. Seals have a short neck, whereas sea lions have a long neck. Yeah. How do they hear? Well, they, don't, they, they have a hole. Uh, seals have a hole in their head where the sound comes in, but there's no external, uh, like, flappy ear on the outside. Uh, yeah. so, they, so they have pretty sharp teeth? Oh, yeah. Have they ever attacked people? Yeah. Uh, probably if you messed with them, they would. But, no, they, they go for, they eat fish, and, and so they usually aren't trying to attack anything big. Sea lion males have external testicles. Seals don't. Sea lions have the back flipper faces forward. Seals don't. Their back flipper faces back. Sea lions have real big front flippers, whereas seals have short front flippers. And there's some other differences, like the sea lions can go back, uh, kind of rotate backwards. Sea lions will stand erect, whereas seals don't really do that very easily. Sea lions use their flippers for swimming, their front flippers like this. And seals just basically use their back flippers for propelling them through the water. The front flippers are more for steering, and, and they don't really swim much with their front. So these are carnivores, they eat fish and squid and anything they can find uh, in the ocean that's meat. They aren't plant eaters. Big seal there. That's a first seal. No, I don't know what that is. It's an elephant seal. That, that's, that's a, this is an elephant seal too? The one on the top. What's the one on the bottom? New Zealand first. Yeah, that's a first. Which is actually related to a sea lion. Oh, look at them. They're so cute. <laughs> I like that one. They're smart. They can be trained to do stuff. You just go to SeaWorld and they're dancing and jumping around. That's the thing about mammals. They're smart.
I went to the Galapagos, there were uh, sea lions all over the place. And whenever you'd go snorkeling, they would come up to you because they were real curious, especially the little babies. And you, you, you could play with them. Like One of the games they liked to play was tag. And they'd like to just keep just out of your reach. But they'd swim up to you, and they'd wait for you to try to get them, and then they'd try to get away. Did you touch them? Yeah, you could try to. Did you? Yeah. And you could just barely touch them, though. They'd like, once you touched them, they'd, they'd move. And then another game they'd play is they'd try and get, stay behind you. <laughs> and so you turn, and then they'd try and swim to stay behind your back. So you could be turning as fast as you can, and then swimming. <coughs> I took that picture. Thank you. You get right up to them. They weren't scared of humans there. There's me reading a magazine inside of. <laughs> you get right in the faces of these things. They're everywhere. This is some playing with some sort of something they found. I don't know what that was. There's a little baby. Babies look furrier. Oh, thank you. so cute. You could see how these things could easily be hunted to extinction because they're not running away here. And in some places they have been. They're protected on the Galapagos. But like the fur seals, you can't find a fur seal even on the Galapagos because the fur seals were hunted for their fur. They're real furry, basically real furry sea lions. And it was hard to even see a fur seal. They were scared of humans because the only ones that survived were the ones that were scared of humans. The ones that weren't scared of humans were all slaughtered for their fur. And the only ones that are around now are real skittish. They won't.
Um, okay, what about walruses? Well, walruses have big, long tusks. They look a lot different from seals and sea lions. The tusks help them defend themselves. It also helps anchor them to the ice. There's some thought that they might help them dig through the sand at the bottom of the ocean to hunt. <coughs> They're probably also used for uh, to get a mate. The, the females like the big tusks if you're a female walrus. They feed mostly on clams, bottom invertebrates. Um, mostly some uh, shellfish, you know, mollusks that live at the bottom of the ocean. They dig them up, crack them open, bite them open, and eat them. They got many stiff whiskers. And so do uh, seals and sea lions have whiskers too. The whiskers help them feel the current movements of the water and such, kind of like the lateral line of a fish. They can also feel them feel their way around in the uh, when the water's cloudy or dark. You can kind of feel your way around if you have longer whiskers. Walruses live in the Arctic Circle. That's in the northern, the northern part of the world, on islands and ice packs. They're, le they're still legally hunted in Alaska and Siberia. Luckily, you can even even with human hunting, you can survive in the Arctic Circle because there's not many humans that live up there. Nobody wants to live in the Arctic Circle. It's freaking freezing up there. And it's dark nine months out of the year, or six months out of the year. So uh, you don't get, you get enough, there's, there's, they hunt them, but there's not enough hunting to really threaten their numbers too much. But their numbers still are much lower than they used to be. And some of them are in danger. Yeah. Where's Siberia? Russia. Siberia is northern Russia, okay. like the northern part of Russia. It's also real cold up there. There's a walrus. You can see it looks a lot different from a seal or a sea lion. See some walrus video? Walruses are in the order Pinnipedia. Pinniped means wing-footed, which describes the flipper-like appendages of these mammals. Walruses have tusks, and are found exclusively in the Arctic. More walrus video. Uh-oh, this might be the same walrus video. Walruses are in the orbit. It is. I'm sorry. Man, I had a good walrus video on saw the world record walrus. You did? Yeah. yeah. Wyoming. It's mountain. It's just for like this long. It's had the world alive? record in size? Yeah. Is it alive? No, it's dead. It was killed a long time ago. <laughs> Type in walrus. Type in walrus hunting. Survey say the situation can be very dangerous because walruses are easily startled and can't stampede. 
Some walruses, particularly calves and juveniles, can get crushed to death by larger walruses moving about. This aerial video recorded for the USGS was taken from an altitude of 4,000 feet near Point Lay, Alaska. Because aircraft could prompt a stampede, there's a no-fly zone. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service asks aircraft to maintain a lateral distance of a half mile and a minimum altitude of 1,500 feet. Walruses forage on the seafloor and usually use sea ice as a resting platform between feedings. This is the first time tens of thousands of walruses have been seen crowded together here, though similar sightings have been recorded in Russia and another area of northwestern Alaska in years past. The WWF says Arctic sea ice is at the third lowest level in recorded history. USGS is conducting more research to better understand the effects of the walrus haulout and other changes related to climate change and sea ice melt. live among the kelp beds of California, upon which they depend for food and protection. These playful and entirely marine mammals even give birth to their young among the kelp fronds. They eat crabs, sea urchins, and mollusks that live on the sea floor, cracking them open with rocks as they float on their backs. Huh. They're tool users. Their tails? 
Is there like, is a sea otter yeah. the same kind of a fre as a freshwater otter? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that's a different species. Right. You guys know what we have here. Yeah. We yeah. have the river otters here. Yeah. I'm not sure what those are. I don't think they're endangered. I hope not. I saw one everybody looks inside. We'll have to look that up, what a river otter is. I killed a lot of otters. Polar bears. You've heard of these, right? Huh? Big white bears. <laughs> they drift around on the Arctic ice. They hunt and eat seals. They, just like all these creatures that live in the Arctic, are threatened by global warming and melting of the Arctic ice. That's probably why those walruses were huddled there on that island in such huge numbers, is there, the ice is melting. The ice melts sooner every year because the temperature of the earth is getting hotter and uh, it ends up driving a lot of these to extinction. That's a fake picture on the right. It's not real. <laughs> it was made by somebody trying to push the global warming idea. <laughs> Polar bears are huge. I mean, they, they, they're big. This is a pretty cool video of a polar bear who's kind of being driven to starvation because he can't find any food, and so he tries to attack walruses, which they normally don't eat. Um, the but they, can, they can't eat walrus babies, but walrus adults usually defend them and protect their babies. And so you're, going, uh, you're, you're risking getting hurt if you attack walruses. They're the most dangerous kind of bear. Yeah, oh yeah. They'll eat people if they can get them. Are they in danger now? Uh, that's a good question. Probably so. This female walrus is shielding her pup. If he can just prize her off. With the herd retreating to water, the bear must move quickly. Having failed with one, he heads straight for another. His first meal in months is slipping away. He seems increasingly desperate. It's now or never. He must avoid the stabbing tusks if he's the wind. Shows them dying? I don't know if it shows them dying, but I think they say that he can't find any food and it's used up all his energy. 
This is the fate of a lot of people. Um, all right. The next thing we study are the uh, manatees and dugongs, order Sirenia. We got manatees around here. Also highly endangered. Also known as sea cows. Also have thick blubber. They're the origin of the mermaid myths. You ever heard of a mermaid? Yes, Little Mermaid. Well, the sailors on these ancient ships were so drunk and hadn't seen women in so long <laughs> that when they see these manatees, they say, oh, that's a, that's a woman. <laughs> and the, and the, and the uh, manatees, or, or is it the dugongs, one of the two will, will, will sing, you know, will make noises. So the mermaid's song, you know, is a manatee just... <laughs> They hadn't seen a woman in a long time, so um, a dugong is like is, is like a manatee. There are small differences, I think, in the size of the tail or something like that. Um, I've got some pictures here. I'll show you. They're straight vegetarians. They eat sea grass growing at the bottom of these rivers that we have around here. There's grasses and they eat them. Well, there's one kind of grass they like. It's called manatee grass. And they cruise around eating the grasses. They're very slow movers. They're easily hunted. They got a lot of meat. Also, because of human kind of intrusion on the beaches and the, uh, in the rivers and marshes, the disappearance of the marshes is real bad for them. So as humans fill in the marshes with, with more dirt and build houses on it, they're losing their, their habitat. And then boating. These things all swim at the surface. So you can't see, big boats can't see them because they're, they're like, like a foot under the surface of the water, and they hit them with their propeller. I saw one like two weeks ago. Oh, yeah? So they say, you see all these signs for boaters that says, slow, go slow here with this manatee area. Because they can get out of the way, but they get out of the way. You can only get out of the way of a slow boat, not a fast one. And you almost never find that it's almost impossible to find a, a manatee that doesn't have propeller scars. But they like attracted to dripping water. Yeah, they like they like fresh water. Yeah. And my dad keeps his boat over at Jekyll, and the guy over there will put a hose in the water and turn the turn the water on. And the, and the manatees will come up and drink from the hose because they, they like to drink the fresh water. And you can pet them. I've petted manatees. They're huge. So is that a manatee or a dugong? It's a West Indian manatee. Only 3,000 West Indian manatees remain along the coast and rivers of Florida. Some concentrate in the warm water affluence of power plants. They like warm water too. So they'll, they'll swim up to where power plants are releasing their water, like nuclear power plants have all this hot water, and they release it into back into the rivers after they use it to cool their towers and such. And so these things will swim up in because they like the warm water. Manatees have been considered as a possible way to control weeds that sometimes block waterways. I don't know the difference between a manatee and a dugong, to tell you the truth. Does it say in the reading there? Manatees, also called sea cows, belong to the order Sirenia. They feed on algae and... Say that again. Smaller. Dugongs are smaller? Okay. ...algae in coastal waters. Manatees were once heavily hunted and are now on the endangered species list.
protected by the barrier reef, vast fields of undersea grass flourish. Herds of timid beasts once grazed these prairies. A few still survive here. A manatee, one of the gentlest of all creatures. Yeah. 